Uh, hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this time I want to make a fairly short presentation about uh, Sato's work as minister in Japan, so Ernest Sato's work as minister in Japan. Um, we've got the two photographs here, um, 1869 and 1900. You note the parting has changed. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, so let's move on. So again, I give you the outline of Sato's career, which uh, perhaps you can more or less take as read, and uh, you can always pause uh, the video to take it in properly. Um, I'm going to focus on 1895 to 1900, his time in Japan as envoy extraordinary and minister plenipotentiary, and also actually consul general, according to his commission which he received uh, from Queen Victoria. Okay, so um, let's move on to the outline. Um, well, Sato returned to Japan in 1895 as minister after service in Siam, Thailand, Uruguay, and Morocco. He had vis visited Japan twice from Siam in 1884 and 1886. It was a chance to reconnect with old friends, acquaintances, and his Japanese family. It was also the post for which he had been aiming since being obliged to leave Japan in 1883 for promotion from the consular to the diplomatic service. He had not wanted to leave Japan in any case, and certainly he uh, regretted it for a while after that, after leaving, uh, if letters to friends are anything to go by. Well, Sato at work. Um, Sato had by this time become a mature, discreet, and highly professional diplomat, trusted as a safe and experienced pair of hands by the Foreign Office. He had frequent interviews with high-ranking politicians such as Ito Hirobumi, Inoue Karu, Mutsu Munemitsu, Okuma Shigenobu, and many other senior figures in the Japanese military and aristocracy. He recorded these carefully in his diary and reported conscientiously back to London in dispatches and semi-official letters. Uh, so this presentation is really about this part of uh, Sato's time in uh, Tokyo in 1895 to 1900. For his time uh, at Nikko, his rest and re recuperation r and I've done a separate video. Um, as I say, he also kept a separate diary of his recreation at Lake Chuzenji, which he visited whenever he had the chance, especially in the hot summer months. He visited 31 times in the period of 1895 to 1900 and 38 times in total, and he built a cottage by the lake in 1896. Okay, so the background of Sato at work. Uh, Sato in Morocco received a telegram offering him the Tokyo legation on the 2nd of May, 1895, and the appointment was confirmed on the 17th of May. He was the ideal candidate after spending about 20 years in Japan. Um, the Anglo-Japanese treaty signed in July 1894 by Aoki Shuzo and Lord Kimberley provided for the abolition of extraterritoriality in July 1899, um, five years after the treaty was signed. So that had, been, that had happened uh, while Sato had been away. Uh, treaty revision had successfully been concluded. Um, Sato was knighted KCMG, uh, uh, knight uh, of the, knight commander of the Order of St. Michael and St. George uh, in England while on leave. Uh, on the 25th of June, 1895. In England, he saw Sir Thomas Sanderson, the permanent Under Secretary for Foreign Affairs. And uh, he was told there are three questions in the East. Uh, what is Japan going to get for giving away about the Liaotsung Peninsula in Southern Manchuria, uh, which uh, Japan had won by passage of arms with China in the Sino-Japanese War, 1894 to five. Uh, Korea, uh, note the spelling of Korea with a C, where Japanese reforms are not accepted 
and Formosa, what we now call Taiwan, Formosa being a Portuguese word meaning beautiful, beautiful island, I suppose, where the Chinese seem to be secretly sending arms to those who oppose Japan. War might break out again if this is true. Japan is probably more exhausted than is usually thought. This is from Sato's diary. Um, and then he had an interview with Lord Kimberley, the outgoing foreign secretary who had appointed him on June the 28th, 1895. So when the Japanese received the joint demand, the so-called tripartite intervention or Sangoku Kansho uh, of Russia, France, and Germany to give up Liao Tsung, Kato came and told him, told him, that's Lord Kimberley, of the proposed Japanese answer, Kato being the Japanese minister in London. Um, he advised them to give away as Russia was in earnest and they did so. He told the three powers of the advice he had given and all parties had expressed their thanks. But the Japanese were furious with the Germans and the Germans furious with the Russians for trying to do them out of a share in the loan. Um, Germany and Her Majesty's government had represented to the Chinese government the undesirability of giving away the security of the Chinese customs for so small a sum as it would prejudice the issue of the indemnity loan and Japan also had been put up to the same. So it was likely that would fall through. He thinks the Russians will press the Japanese to withdraw from Korea and has said to Kato in reply to a question that he thought it might be well to recur to the proposal originally made by England at the outbreak of the Sino-Japanese war that the independence of Korea should be guaranteed by Russia and Great Britain doubtless in conjunction with Japan. Continuing, uh, the Chinese alliance would never be of any use unless they had been taken in hand by the Japanese and thoroughly drilled and taught on European systems. The Japanese at one time had thought of this but had recognized its impossibility. Anyhow, China was unreliable and useless. We should keep on friendly terms with her but not count on her as a factor against Russia. He thought the English newspapers at Yokohama did a great deal of harm to our friendly relations with the Japanese. It was desirable to humor their vanity a little and cultivate their goodwill. It was no longer possible to treat them as semi-civilized and to bully them. They must be treated on a footing of equality. The next day Sato left England for Japan and he arrived on uh, the 28th of July in, uh, in Japan, that is, via New York and Vancouver. So Lord Salisbury became foreign secretary in June 1895 with a change of government. He was more skeptical about Japan's capability and reliability than Kimberley had been. When Sato wrote to him asking for instructions on August the 18th, Salisbury in his reply dated 3rd of October, doubted whether Japan could stop Russia from obtaining an ice-free port, which she could take by marching over from Siberia um, Sato was told to concentrate on promoting trade and competing with the Germans in this area. And here is Salisbury on the right. So Sato called on the Prime Minister Ito Hirobumi on the 1st of August 1895 as per his diary entry. We first talked about Morocco and then I congratulated him upon the success of their arms by sea and land and on the peace negotiations, which had turned out so well for Japan. We talked a good deal about the peninsula, that's the Liao Tsung Peninsula, and I wrote a dispatch afterwards about the conditions on which Japan is willing to give it up. Then the talk fell on Korea. He asked me whether England had any interest there. Commercially, I replied, it was not of great importance, but we were anxious that what Japan was trying to prevent should not come, but come about. I asked whether it was the desire of Russia to bring their railway through Manchuria or to a port in Korea. He answered that what they aim at is something much greater than a port. Uh, said that I had also to congratulate him on the conclusion of treaty revision. I was glad to find on my return here that this question which had occupied the two governments for so many years was now out of the way. About Formosa, he said that the want of proper roads prevented transport of troops and guns, 
while the port down south is bad and landing difficult at this time of year. But during the present month, they will be sending 40,000 men, that's two and a half divisions, in addition to the division and a half they already have there. Uh, okay, so Formosa, Taiwan. Um, this is Ito on the left, and uh, on the right, uh, this is Ito and Mutsumune Mitsu, uh, who negotiated uh, the Treaty of Shimonoseki, ending the Sino-Japanese War uh, in April 1895. Uh, this, uh, these busts are in front of the Shumpanro, uh, which is where the negotiations took place, and you can still visit the, the actual building or where the treaty was signed. Um, anyway, that's my photograph of the busts of the Japanese negotiating team. So uh, audience with Emperor Meiji and the Empress Meiji uh, on August the 9th, Sato had an audience and this is his diary entry. Audience of Emperor and Empress to which I was fetched by Niwa Ryonosuke, uh, master of the ceremonies in one of the Imperial carriages about 20 minutes before 10, the hour fixed for the audience. Date Munenobu, Nagasaki, Sanomiya, Fukui, and one or two others were there. Sayonji, who was to present me, came late, saying that he had thought 10.30 was the hour. The waiting room is large and handsome. Viscount Kagawa Keizo, an old acquaintance who is the Empress Grand Master of Ceremonies, also made his appearance. There was a little waiting outside the reception room while the Emperor was coming in, and then I was introduced into it, made my three bows, and standing about four feet from the Emperor, read my speech in English, which was translated from memory by Nagasaki. The Emperor replied from memory too, and then paused. This was the formal part acknowledging the Queen's letter. Then he added other words, which as translated from the Japanese copy brought to me afterwards by Nagasaki were as follows. We are exceedingly gratified to think that a greater cordiality in the friendly relations existing between our respective countries will be facilitated by the fact of your many years residence in our country and by your thorough knowledge of our national affairs. I thanked him in a short sentence. The emperor looked much stouter in the face than when I, saw him, I last saw him in 1884, and spoke rather indistinctly, so that I could not well catch what he said, and it was a great convenience to have Nagasaki to interpret. Then I backed out in the usual manner and was taken along the side of the reception room, and turning a corner was introduced to the Empress, who was dressed in European clothes and gloves. She gave me her hand and said, then said, I am glad to see you again after so many years. To this I replied through one of the two ladies in waiting that I thanked Her Majesty for her gracious, gracious words. Then she asked how long I had been away from Japan, and I answered in Japanese that I had left 12 years ago and had previously been 20 years in the country. Her next remark was to express her belief that my appointment would tend to, to draw closer the bonds of friendship, to which I replied that I should always do my best to promote that object. Then she said that she understood I was a great scholar in Japanese things, to which I replied that I was very unlearned, had been absent so long that I had lost the power of speaking and feared I might have said rude things. Then she put out her hand again and I shook it, bending low over it, almost as if to kiss it, and bowed myself out. Afterwards, Sanomiya said it had gone off very nicely and that I had spoken very well, and they congratulated me. I responded that I was greatly pleased with the gracious manner of my reception, which indeed was very cordial. So uh, good to know that everything went well. And here is Empress Meiji, who is indeed stout in the face in this photograph, and Empress Meiji. And then uh, the 4th of October, 1895, we have the following diary entry, Sato's diary. Count Inoue Kaoru called, looks very young, hardly a gray hair. Indeed, we can't see uh, hardly, we can see hardly any in this photograph, though he says he is 61. We talked about Korea and I said my idea had always been that Japan was more fitted to lead Korea in the path of progress. 
as there was much more similarity between them than between the Koreans and Chinese. The language shows this. Tong Huk, uh, the Eastern learning religious movement in Korea, it was originally against Christianity, now against official oppression. I'll, uh, please note the abbreviation here. Sato used uh, a great number of abbreviations in his diary. Uh, this is a typical one against. The Taiwan Kun, the regent, was very cruel. Sanguinary, sanguinary murder of his opponents, especially of the Min Taijo, some years ago. In 1869, Kido, that's Kido Koin or Takayoshi, had advocated war with Korea as a means of quieting the Japanese internal dissensions, but Saigo Kichinosuke, that's Saigo Takamori, opposed. Several years later, the two had changed roles. He stayed for about an hour. Uh, so October the 4th continued. In the afternoon, went to Count Okuma Shigenobu, who was very friendly. Very glad I had been appointed here as I knew Japan from the days of the feudal system and had many friends here. Since Sir Harry Parks left in 1883, Her Majesty's government had not sent any man of weight here. Neither um, Francis Plunkett, um, Fraser, nor uh, Trench uh, understood Eastern problems. Very friendly, but nothing more. Uh, the square brackets are things I've put in. So Harry used to pitch into them, but he did them many a good turn, especially during the restoration, when the Imperial Party would have been much inconvenienced if England had taken the same line as France and America. When Sir Harry left in 1883, he had talked to say goodbye, he had called to say goodbye and remarked that sooner or later they would have trouble with China on account of Korea. Uh, which of course was correct. Um, at present, they were not ready to encounter another enemy, such as Russia, for example, for their manufacturing power, i.e. of weapons and finance were not sufficiently developed. The present magazine rifle was not good and they were working to supply another better model but it would be some time before they could furnish 300,000 men with rifles. Of ships, they could easily purchase enough and their maritime population gave them a source of supply, which a couple of years would convert into efficient sailors, but officers took many years longer. However, there were more entries than before to the Naval College. Okay, this is Okuma Shigenobu on the right, founder of Waseda University and also sometime foreign minister. Um, we talked about the government. He said the military members of the cabinet did not bother about politics being satisfied if their departments were not interfered with. In fact, of late years, the interference of military element in politics had greatly abated, or reduced. The present minister of finance was a good permanent official who knew his business, but had no political influence. Mutsu, that's Mutsu Mune Mitsu, would not be able to resume office, which was a great pity. He knew Mutsu was one of my friends. Sayonji was very intelligent and of excellent family, uh, is a younger brother of Tokudaiji, but very much a uh, shose, disliking the trammels of office, a student. Speaking of England's policy of late years, he said she had not noticed that the trade of Japan had risen in a few years from one tenth of that of China to more than a half. And if things went on as they are now doing, might in a few years be more than the whole. He rejoiced to think that Her Majesty's government was now devoting her attentions to the extreme east, where she ought to occupy a great position. As to China, he doubted whether she would ever rise to be of any political weight. And that was a matter of concern to Japan, for if she fell under the influence of a European power, then Japan would be left alone in a position of danger. Uh, actually, Sato called on Mutsu Munemitsu on February the 27th, 1896. Diary entry again. Called on Mutsu just for a friendly interview. He says he will stay here till Yamagata and Prince Fushimi, Fushimi Sadanaru leave and then go back to Oiso till the middle of March. Uh, that's Oiso by the sea. Uh, I think it's uh, Kanagawa Prefecture. Dr. Bales thinks he ought to re retire, and I myself doubt his coming back to office. 
He had been shut up 10 months at Shimonoseki, so ill that twice he had to absent himself from peace conferences and dragged himself out to sign the treaty uh, on April 17th, 1895. Then he went to Maikonia Corbyn, no sooner there than the intervention of three powers came, so he had a private wire laid on to his lodgings. Said he hoped I would come and see him at his little house at Oiso, yes, a seaside town in Kanagawa Prefecture, but not to tell colleagues that he had received me as he had declined to see the French minister Armand. And Mutsu died of tuberculosis the following year. Um, reporting back to London, Sato frequently wrote semi-official letters to Lord Salisbury and others, as well as official dispatches. And here's an example of a semi-official letter. 27th of January, 1898. Dear Lord Salisbury, Ito has managed to get together a rather stronger cabinet than was expected. His fellow clansman Inoue having taken finance and Nishi remaining at the Foreign Office. The latter is a very reticent person. All the colleagues, that's diplomatic colleagues, say they can get nothing out of him and he will never admit that he knows anything of what goes on at Peking. But I've heard through a private source that Yano Fumio, the Japanese minister there, has been urging his government to come to the aid of China. I do not suppose that these representations have had any effect. No stir is to be seen among the troops and the squadron still lies at Yokosuka. I think the firm intention of the Japanese is still to remain quiet until their military program is carried out and the ships being built in Europe and America are delivered here, which cannot be for another three years at least. They will not run any risks of encountering, encountering European powers, for example, Russia, uh, or perhaps, I don't know, uh, Germany, with their precious squadron, unless it were in combination with Great Britain. For a chance of getting back into Korea with our aid, they would venture a good deal. This is from Sato Papers, PRO 3033-1410. Um, PRO 3033 is the, the suffix, uh, sorry, the prefix for all of the Sato Papers. And then 1410 uh, is the 14 series, which is Sato's, it's actually copies of Sato's semi-official letters. Uh, back to England, of which this is one. And just to finish this section off, here are my publications related to Sato's work as minister in Japan, um, 1895 to 1900. First his diary, as a paperback there on the left, and then his semi-official letters actually from Japan and China, 1895 to 1906 on the right. Uh, these are both available from Amazon and uh, they're also available as Kindle books from Amazon. Uh, and the, the one on the left is also available from lulu.com. And that for the time being is all I would like to say on this topic. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.